Hey, this is Pamela Riemenschneider. I'm the retail editor for Blue Book Services, and this is the Produce Reporter Week in Review. Greg, you got an official setup there. What's going on? Yes, I'm calling in from the podcast center at the IFPA Food Service Show. This is so nice, I have to say, because I'm using a tripod and not having to hold this camera up with my hand. So it's not going to shake. I'm not going to get tired and switch it around. I'm not staring at the sun. Uh, <laughs> we all the things going for us this time. Yeah, we can we can go legit every once in a while, I guess. Well, funny thing, funny coincidence. Um, if you recall, a couple of weeks ago when I was standing probably close to where you are now, um, we were talking about Kroger and Albertsons. And as the retail turns, um, Kroger and Albertsons, you know, breaking news on Thursday a Colorado judge has put it put in a temporary injunction and scheduled a hearing about it. But now, uh, breaking news Thursday afternoon, according to the Washington, well, I mean, sorry, <laughs> according to the Wall Street Journal, the, the Kroger and Albertsons have officially paused things. Like, wow, okay, that is, that is getting serious right now. That's serious. I, I, I would say um, this feels to me like a temporary pause because like we we are getting news all the time about this thing and other mergers and acquisitions. It's like we're getting hit with news. Well, on a national scale, we're an unprecedented news cycle where people are dropping out of presidential races and getting shot. And there's just a lot of turmoil. And it would not surprise me if they're just going to put a little pause and wait to see what the heck happens in the broader picture, like November, because uh, as we've reported, the FTC under the Obama administration has been pretty strict on some of these mergers. And they have been pretty outspoken being against this merger on competitive grounds. And if the the power balance were to shift in Washington in November, which would have come into effect in January, it could be a totally different situation. So it, it's like, it makes me think maybe they're going to call off the fight and see what happens in the bigger picture. So, um, so I'm reading, I'm reading the wall street journal article, uh, which just came out a couple of minutes ago. And so they, the companies agreed to put the temporary injunction in a state lawsuit. Um, and the state sued to block the merger. That that's old news. Um, and then the Federal Trade Commission separately filed a lot another lawsuit. Um, a Kroger spokeswoman said Thursday that the decision to elim to pause the merger eliminates the need for an August hearing in the Chicago in the Colorado case. So it sounds like they're trying to avoid immediate action, like you said, and just wait and see. Um, that we were talking last time about uh, wider divestitures, a little more, little more information about which stores they plan to offload to CNS wholesale grocers. There's been a lot of chatter about the store choices and store selection amongst us, and then also if you just you know troll around LinkedIn like I do all day long. <laughs> so that's my finger on the pulse of the retail news is to see what all the analysts and what the chatter is about it. Um, well, don't forget TikTok too. Well, yeah, TikTok. You know what? My TikTok's a little less about Kroger, a little more about coconuts right now. <laughs> but, um, you are in Monterey, though. What else? Like things are just getting started um, on the IFPA's food service conference. Um, have you eaten in any good restaurants while you're out there? Well, of course, I've had uh, seafood already. So absolutely, <laughs> that's you have to do that when you're here. I, we are recording this right as the education program is about to start, and then the expo will be Friday. So I won't have a report from that on this conference uh, with you, but I did get a preview from Joe Watson last week, which we ran at the beginning of this week, and I asked him about uh, whether or not they're going to look into how strongly inflation is affecting the food service industry, because we've had so many stories about that, and, and just uh, anecdotal things like uh, uh, McDonald's is uh, extending their $5 value meal because it has been so successful that franchise owners have requested from uh, the corporate to, to extend it. It was supposed to be uh, only like a very short amount of time, but it's getting 
customers back in the store and their restaurants who had left mainly out of inflation reasons. So I'm told there will be an, a couple sessions with technomic data that will look into what's going on right now, especially as it re relates to inflation and then projecting out a year to a couple years what might be happening. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I will report on it. We will have that coverage next week. I think that's a big, uh, that it's, it's a big thing in the food service industry. And then of course, I expect to see lots of innovative products. And like you saw it at the organic show, different kinds of packaging. I would expect to see more of that than we have typically seen at these shows. It seems like we're on an up, up surge in innovation now after kind of a pause for a couple of years. A lot of innovation and a lot of it keyed in on um, perhaps downsizing pack sizes. Uh, food service is known for its large pack sizes, but I'm sure a lot of restaurant operators are looking to cut as much as they can out of the waste aspect of it. They, they want everything pre-cut. They want, um, you know, I, I've seen... Pre-cut onions are are not new at all, but we're starting to see a whole lot more options in the food service space on the pre-cut side. Um, things that you wouldn't have thought of before um, of being viable. So I, I definitely keep a lookout for a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and the labor situation hasn't really improved. The, the labor market is starting to uh, change a little bit uh, nationally as um, there are more workers for some of the jobs. And so the unemployment rate is slightly rising, but I don't believe that that has hit the food service industry yet. I still think they're really searching for labor. And if if they can do something to address inflation and increase foot traffic, that will increase the, lead, the need for labor, which would be a good problem to have. So uh, you know, one way to solve that is more fresh cut, more prepared, Another way is robotics. We've we've had a little bit of. I don't expect to see a whole lot of robotics in a ten by ten booth event. Yeah, uh, but and when we yeah, talk about you never robotics, know. There, there could be some talk. There could be some chatter. The, the up the upfront on robotics is is a little more that a lot of restaurant operators are are willing to bleed on at the moment, but it's definitely something to watch out for. For sure. All right. Well, I'll leave you to it. I will have a quick one this week and look forward to your coverage next week. That's it for the Produce Reporter Week in Review. If you are not getting the Produce Reporter newsletter, you need to go to producebluebook.com and sign up. And and Greg, go get me one of those sourdough bowls full of full of chowder. It's I'm not it's I'm not sure even if I had your pat, pillow packing system that I could get it back safely. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. See you later.